Welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today, I'm going to be working with a good old friend of mine called Bicep. I've been doing a little bit more Bicep at work, and uh, although it hasn't been the best days of my life, it has been giving me a little bit of perspective on the trials and tribulations that our dear friends that use ARM and Bicep still have to deal with. And this one was a bit of a shocker for me because um, all of my bicep buddies have been like riffing on Terraform for the state file management and all that stuff with bicep promising all of the things that Terraform can do and then, and then some, and they always point out how much faster it is at provisioning things to Azure than Terraform is. But one of the key features of Terraform is the ability to create a plan that lets you know what changes are going to be made to your environment. These changes could be intentional changes that you've made to your code that you want to be pushed out to your existing environment. They could also be drift that has been injected through portal jockeying as I like to call it. But the ability to run a Terraform plan and get and get that evaluation is critical for day two operations. Now I've been using Bicep to provision and manage environments and I've been coming at it from the lens of, a, of an avid Terraform user. And so my expectation is that I'll use it exactly the same way that I use Terraform. I'll run Terraform plan, see what changes I'm gonna to make to the environment, and then I'll run Terraform apply. Um, in this case, Bicep has equivalent parts called Bicep What If, which is essentially equivalent to a Terraform plan. Now, there are structural differences to Bicep that I talk through in other videos, and I encourage you to go check those out. Some of my biggest beefs with Bicep are well documented in other videos that I made on this channel, namely the ultimate showdown between Bicep and Terraform. Um, so I won't get into all that, but what I discovered most recently is that what if or Terraform plan equivalent functionality is essentially broken in Bicep. And get this, it's a known defect. And you might be asking, well, Mark, how could such critical day two operations functionality be absent from Bicep? And I, I really have no idea. But I think what's happening is, is that what if is partially supported? And there's an edge case, edge case, that hasn't been implemented yet. So let's go check out the code. So here's my bicep template, and I have a bicep.main, which basically uh, follows a, a common pattern that I've noticed, you know, when spelunking bicep files or bicep templates out on the inner tubes, is that there's a main.bicep that has a target scope at the subscription level. And then because of the rigidity of the scoping of a bicep file to one of Azure's four levels within the topology, tenant, management group, subscription, resource group, you see every bicep file has to be scoped to one of those levels. And so typical deployments start out at the subscription level where you provision a resource group. As we all know, resource groups are provisioned within the context of a subscription. But then all the resources within that resource group have to be provisioned within a, a different bicep file because the target scope is no longer a subscription, it's a resource group. This rigidity does not exist in Terraform. When using the Azure RM provider, a resource group, although we know is scoped within a subscription and all the resources we know are scoped within a resource group, we aren't forced to segment our files or organize our file structure based on this internal Azure topology. Now what this constraint manifests within this code base is that every resource or cluster of resources that we provision need to be grouped into their own bicep file that is scoped at the resource group level. Let's go look at some of these examples. In main.bicep, you can see immediately that I have a number of bicep files, each with a scope that's pointed at the, the infra resource group. So I'm declaring this resource group at the subscription level scope, but then I'm passing that resource group in as the scope for these sub modules. That essentially means that unlike in Terraform, where I could just declare this user assigned identity as a resource within this root module, this, this main.bicep file, I have to go create a new bicep file and then declare that resource in that bicep file. And then I have to declare a module reference to that bicep file and pipe in all the parameters that it needs. So here I got managed identity. Let's go look at managed identity.bicep. And really there's not a lot of stuff going on here. I would argue that this is one of the weaknesses from a software development standpoint of bicep 
in that essentially because of this tight coupling to the Azure topology for each bicep file, as a bicep developer, I'm being led down a path where I'm basically creating resource wrapper modules. The idea of a module within Terraform is very different than the idea of a module within bicep. Number one, a module in Terraform is made up of a folder with multiple Terraform files, but a module in bicep is just a single bicep file with a bunch of resources declared into it. And a pattern that although I don't know is necessarily dictated by this structure of the language, has definitely manifested pretty widely as a pattern that bicep developers follow, where they create individual bicep files for every resource that they declare. This creates unnecessary param and output declarations and essentially takes what otherwise would have just been four lines of code and turns it into approximately 24 lines of code spread across two different files with most of the additional code essentially just boilerplate inputs and outputs. Now that is a legitimate criticism of bicep. However, it really only impacts readability and maintainability of your bicep code. It doesn't impact the functionality. You can still get the job done. Where things get deadly is with this issue with the what if functionality of bicep. If you embed bicep resources in additional bicep files that cascade down through these modules, what if will not work on those modules. What happens is the first time you run bicep what if, it'll do the entire plan. But the second time, day two, what if only evaluates the resources that are directly within the root bicep file. It doesn't traverse all of those modules to create a complete evaluation of your entire existing environment. So what happens is when I run what if here against this existing environment, it doesn't give me a complete view of the world. It says six to modify, one to change, 35 to ignore. That's a huge chunk of my infrastructure that it's just completely ignoring. And if we go look at like what it's ignoring, right? This, the rest of this looks kind of like a plan. We got delete, modify, no change, ignore, and no effect. Now, some of my resources are actually showing changes. It's evaluating my resource group. And then there are some things at the resource group level that it is evaluating. My container registry, my PIP for my VPN gateway, diagnostic setting for my VPN gateway, my VPN gateway itself, my virtual network, and my virtual network diagnostic setting. However, all of this other stuff is being completely ignored. Why? Well, let's go look at the files and see what the big difference is. So the two files that are not being ignored apparently are my acr.bicep and my network.bicep, which contains both my VNet and my VPN gateway and my VPN gateways pip. So what is the difference between these files and all my other files that are including them in the what if plan, but excluding everything else to what if ignored purgatory? Now I know I made changes to my app gateway, so let's go look at the app gateway side by side. So the params look pretty close. We've got location, resource group name, resource group name prefix, We've got the subnet ID. Now the subnet ID is coming out of this network.bicep. So that might be causing it. If there's dependency between modules, maybe that is causing what if to short circuit. But we also see this workspace ID being passed into both. So I gotta believe that my log analytics module that's provisioning log analytics is outputting a workspace ID and I'm passing it in to both my network and my app gateway here. So module dependency is probably not what's causing it. I'm setting the name and location pretty similarly. Yeah, I'm really not seeing a major difference between the way these are set. Let's look at the module definitions themselves. So this, we're setting the scope the same way. We're using infra rg.location. We're using a name prefix. For ACR, we're passing in a VNet ID. For App Gateway subnet, we're passing in the App Gateway subnet ID and the workspace ID. So there's really no difference between the module definitions because we have dependencies on other modules here, log analytics.outputs. Let's look at what's different about these. So um, network outputs.infra subnet ID is probably okay. Let's go look at this load balancer private IP. <laughs>
Well, I am thoroughly perplexed. I've updated quite a few of these that are being ignored with an explicit target scope. And when I rerun my what if, it still does, it still ignores them. So I, and we're still at six to modify, one to change, 35 to ignore. So I, I don't know what to do here. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it does appear that bicep what if just doesn't work or partially works. And there's some, you know, magic that is making some of these work, even though they aren't in nested modules. I thought it was initially nested modules um, that was causing the problem, but I mean, some of my nested modules work, some of them don't. There is this issue on GitHub where they talk about a seemingly related issue, but this issue seems to focus on the reference function, which my bicep code isn't really using the reference function anywhere. Now, maybe bicep is auto-generating these reference functions internally on the ARM templates that it deploys, and that's what's causing the issue. Could be, because um, I'm not seeing I'm not seeing the reference function in the bicep code. But that doesn't mean that when my bicep compiles down into ARM, it doesn't generate these reference functions. So it looks like Alex met Alex up at HashiConf um, has given a definitive answer here that says, "What if short circuits too aggressively when we see?" A reference function. So it looks like this might be in the works, but still hasn't been resolved. So hopefully Bicep can get this what if functionality implemented because, I mean, from a day two operation standpoint, this is a linchpin. I can't tell you how much of a linchpin this is to day two operations. If I make changes to my infrastructure's code template and I want to go push those changes, I need to have a way to see what changes I'm going to be putting out there so that I don't accidentally bork myself. And on the arm bicep side, what if is really what's supposed to make this possible? If I can't do that, I'm literally crossing my fingers, closing my eyes, rolling the dice, and hoping everything goes perfectly. Um, and when I do deploy to production, that is just unacceptable. Anyways, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm not here trying to rag on bicep, but this is a very important piece of functionality that's missing. And I think people should be aware of it when they decide on what infrastructure's code tool that they use to manage their environment, even in a one cloud environment where you use Microsoft Azure. Well, that's it for me. This is the Azure Terraformer signing off.